Hey guys, this is Max Leo Grandis from Team JP Rifles, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about my tuning process for the JP5. This is something that I've come to the conclusion over the last two years of running this gun, and one thing that I love about this gun is just the simplicity um, and the ability to get it to run very well recoiling and reliably without doing that much to it. So um, the JP guys brought out a demo gun for me to show you. I haven't even opened this up yet. I assume this is in stock configuration with the 80 degree locker in there and the SCS as it would come from the factory. So um, I brought out my own tools. They didn't prompt me or anything. This is what's in my tool bag for my JP5. So I have a 1 8 inch uh, punch and it has a flat top that's useful for me for um, actually pushing some springs back into place. I have a dental pick. This is mainly for cleaning the extractor pocket and getting the extractor spring out. It also helps with removing the ejector. Um, a T25 Torx bit. You're gonna need this if you wanna take your silent capture spring apart and do some spring tuning on that. And then uh, if you wanna change your spring weights on the silent capture spring between stainless steel and tungsten, I like this really tiny flathead bit so I can get in there and pry the keeper spring off. Um, you can also use a pocket knife, but just be careful not to stab yourself if you're using that. I mean, you can stab yourself with one of these two, so just be careful in general. Um, of course, make sure the gun's clear first. Go ahead and dry fire it down the range, just for fun. Um, so JP's pins, uh, the takedown and pivot pin, are not super easy to press out with your fingers, so that's why I like to use the punch initially for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the whole rifle for you guys here, we'll take the upper off. And to get the silent capture out, there's no uh, buffer retainer in here, so I usually just like to throw it forward a little bit. If the hammer's back, it'll come out no problem. So throw it forward, it'll come out against the ejector there, and I just push the ejector down, and then it comes out really nicely, just like that. Um, so this is basically where I do most of my tuning because the locking piece, it's almost self-explanatory self which locking piece you're gonna use for the ammo that you'd like to run. Um, then from there, all I've done uh, is change the spring. I have experimented a lot with the silent capture uh, in the JP5. It's a little bit unique. It's only got two weights on it to reduce the reciprocating mass and one of the weights is um, chamfered a little bit at the edge there. Um, so the bottom weight might be a little bit lighter than the top. So we have a lot less mass in here than the stock JP silent capture spring that you'd find you know, in an AR-15 setup. Um, but it shares the springs exactly the same as the other ones. So I like to have all the options available. JP does sell a PCC tuning kit, which has kind of the medium range of springs, but I like to buy the AR-15 kit and the AR-10 kit so that I have everything from the weakest spring to the strongest spring and I can really dial in the exact right feel that I want for my ammo. If you're not sensitive to that stuff, um, like I feel like I'm one of the most sensitive shooters to how my gun's shooting. Uh, maybe you don't care about it so much. And um, like I know Josh Freilich is like this. He's like, just give me a gun and I'll run it. So if you're like that, maybe just the PCC spring pack will be good for you. Um, but in a stock configuration, the spring comes uh, at the 85% rate and that's painted black on one side. Um, also one thing to note about this is notice the long uh, nylon piece at the bottom. That is a pre-short stroked system. So it only compresses this far. You know, on the uh, other silent capture springs, this piece is a lot shorter, so you have more bolt travel. Going back to that, I've experimented with a lot of different things on here. I have pulled this back and put extra spacers in the bottom. I've put a wave spring in the bottom to get an extra spring compression. I put washers back there to further reduce the travel. I've experimented initially with uh, adding weight and removing weight from the silent capture weight carrier. So that means like removing one of these weights and allowing one to slide back and forth, or uh, even removing both of them and running it in a super light configuration where it's just the carrier itself. I would not recommend those. Every time I've strayed away from the stock configuration on the weight here and the bolt carrier, obviously I've kept that stock, the recoil impulse has gotten worse for me across different ranges of ammo. So that's even you know trying higher pressure light uh, light bullet loads, all the way up to heavy lower pressure you know 147 competition loads. Um, yeah, again, so I just keep that stock. I keep it simple. When I tune this gun, I change the locking piece first to make sure that uh, that's optimized for the ammo that I want to run, and then I'll change the spring. 
and that's all I do. Other than that, I just keep it clean and it's really simple, really reliable. Okay, so let's take a look at the bolt carrier group here. It's one of my favorite features of the gun is how simple this thing is. So you have a carrier and a bolt like normal and then you have another piece that you're probably not familiar with if you haven't used a roller delay system before and that's a locking piece on the inside here. Then of course you have your firing pin and firing pin spring. Um, in order to disassemble this bolt carrier, we're gonna take the bolt, hold the carrier, and you just twist it. You're gonna twist it 45 degrees to start, and it'll pull right out the front just like that. Go ahead and set that aside. And then your locking piece and firing pin you'll see poking out that the bolt was covering before. You're gonna turn these another 45, so now it's 90 degrees total, and they come right out the bottom. Just like that. Be careful because your firing pin and spring will be loose now, so make sure you don't drop those and lose them. This piece right here, this is your locker. So on this one, uh, we have a 70 degree locking piece, but how the gun comes stock, it's most likely gonna be 80 degrees for you. And that's because the 80 degree locker is something that will run any type of ammo you can throw at the gun reliably. But if you're gonna wanna tune it for competition for your optimal load, I'd highly recommend picking up this piece, 70 degree locker. Uh, there is a 60 degree locker also, that is basically for hot factory or like NATO spec 9 mil ammo. Um, I am right on the edge of reliability running the 60 degree locker with Superbell 115 grain ammo. And that's loaded to like 132 power factor out of standard five inch handgun. So it's a little bit higher pressure uh, than competition loads that you guys might be used to. I would not recommend getting the 60 locker unless you know that you want to share factory ammo between a handgun and your PCC or you know you want to experiment with higher pressure loads like that. Um, the 70 degree locker is most likely where you're going to want to be if you are reloading, trying to find that optimal load, loading anything from like 124 to 147 grain bullets, um, or have a custom factory load that you like to purchase, like for example, for example, Superbell's 147 load. Um, so the locking pieces, the 80 degree lock has less locking force than the 70 degree. The lower you go down in those degrees, the more the bolt is gonna grab in with those roller delayed lockers and the more pressure it's gonna take to finally cycle the gun. So what that means is that if you have a, a lower lock degree, you're gonna actually slow down the cycle of the bolt with the same velocity ammo or the same ammo type and that can be beneficial for the felt recoil of the gun. All right, so let me run you through the three steps that I use to tune the JP5. First is ammo selection. What's great about this gun is you have a wide range of ammos that you can tune to feel awesome in competition, uh, much wider range than you'd get from a blowback gun. Like on those kind of guns, you're probably gonna wanna run a softer, lower pressure ammo that's just making you know 130 to 135 power factor but with the JP5, you have a lot more leniency. So if you want to share ammo between your competition handgun and JP5, you can definitely do that. So I'd recommend getting a load that you're comfortable with, uh, test it for accuracy, make sure you like it. Uh, my recommendation would be anywhere from 135 to 145 power factor, somewhere in that range. And uh, of course, make sure it's accurate. And I prefer a little bit of a lighter bullet. I like the faster travel time. I like the recoil impulse, but you're, you can be comfortable with any bullet weight and find something that works for you. So get that your load selected first. Step two of tuning your gun is gonna be selecting your locking piece. The gun's gonna come with an 80 degree locker, which will almost guaranteed run any ammo you throw at it. But in order to get the best feel, I'd highly recommend grabbing a 70 degree locker to play with. Once you have your ammo selected, go ahead and throw that 70 degree locker in. When you do the swap, like we showed, this is how you get it back together. You're gonna to take your locker, put your firing pin and spring back in the locker. Go ahead and slide it into the bolt with the notch facing down and push it in and then turn it 45 degrees. Now it's gonna be locked in there. Then you're gonna take your bolt, slide it over that locker and then turn it another 45 degrees and that's it, super simple. So with the 70 degree locker in place, go ahead and throw the stock silent capture spring back in the gun and shoot a few rounds, experiment. Um, notice the brass ejection pattern, okay? You're gonna want strong ejection 
and that's the best indicator that I've found of making sure my gun's reliable. Uh, keeping it nice and oiled is also a great idea and keeping it clean so there's no sluggishness, there's no fouling, dunking up the oil and slowing down the cycle so you get consistent recoil every time. Um, but if your brass is going out and hitting the ground about two yards from you, it's not just dribbling out of the ejection port and hitting the ground, you're probably going to be reliable with that load. If the brass isn't having strong ejection and it's just dribbling out of that ejection port, putting this on slow motion and really watching what's happening with the brass as it leaves the ejection port is a very good idea. You're probably going to want to go back to the 80 locker and then play around in that range by tuning the spring, which is step number three. But assuming you have strong ejection now with your 70 degree locker and that stock silent capture spring, we can move on to step three also, which is changing the silent capture spring. This is all I've done for my guns, but I do have both the AR-15 and AR-10 kit, so I get a very light to very, very strong springs to put in to tune the gun to the ammo that I want to run. So let's take a look at how to open up the silent capture spring and change the spring. You're gonna need your eighth inch punch and a T25 Torx bit. Notice that there's a hole on the inside rod right here. So you're gonna depress the buffer, put your punch through and it's gonna capture it just like that. So now we can hold that and kind of use it as a, as a point of leverage while we take our T25 bit and unscrew the retainer screw. Now the first time you do this, it's probably gonna feel really, really stiff because there is Loctite on it and you may even have to heat it up a little bit to get it to come out easier. I've actually done it on the open flame of my stovetop before. If you're gonna do that, make sure you don't leave it in there too long. Just do it enough to where, <laughs> you know, the screw comes out uh, and breaks free of that Loctite. Okay, so now that the screw's out, be very careful as you remove the punch because it's under spring pressure and it could go flying. So go ahead and hold that, uh, hold the buffer down, remove the punch, and then make sure you're capturing it as you let it out. So now that we've got the spring out, we have to select a new spring to put in the silent capture. In general, I've found that as long as I maintain strong injection, good reliability, the stronger springs feel better at the same ammo type and same locker. So that's why I like having the AR-10 kit on hand because I can go all the way up to 110% power. Well, this is 85% power. Uh, and I like the feel that that stronger spring gives. It smooths out the recoil impulse. Um, the gun doesn't really jiggle so much when it returns to battery because of that super light reciprocating mass. So I found that stronger spring actually does help the recoil impulse a lot and makes it feel really nice, smooth, and consistent. So don't be afraid to go stronger. Um, let's say that I had really strong ejection and maybe even a little too much of a hit in my shoulder than I'd like with the 85% spring. So maybe I want to throw in the 100% spring that comes in that AR-15 kit or even the AR-10 kit. So I don't have it on hand here, but let's just pretend this is the 100% spring. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that on, do the same process in reverse, get your uh, silent capture weight there, your buffer, go ahead and hold it back on, get that punch back in, and then now we can screw in the bolts again. Now, best practice would definitely be to clean the bolt, reapply Loctite, but obviously if you're tuning, that's not gonna be the case because you're gonna be taking it apart, putting it back together a lot of times in a row. So I found in general that if I just give it a nice cinch at the end there, it doesn't really come loose. The, the pressures uh, and the shake of the gun as it shoots don't really make this screw ever walk out in my experience. But once you found the tune that you like and you wanna permanently leave that spring in there, I'd highly recommend cleaning that bolt off, reapplying Loctite and then screwing it in and letting it set before you're 100% confident in your gun. So that's the process for changing the spring. Just go ahead and throw that back into your gun, test again, really uh, make some nice notes and have a good measurement drill set up to where you can accurately determine if that is actually a better feeling recoil or worse feeling recoil. Because the worst thing you can do is just dump rounds into a berm 
and spend two hours at the range getting lost with all these configurations and then not really having any good data of any. Okay, so let's recap. Step one, select the ammo that you want to run. What's really nice about this gun is that you can tune it to run a wide range of ammo from hotter light loads, uh, heavier bullets, competition loads, whatever you want. You can even share ammo between your competition handgun and the JP5 and get something that works really well for you. Of course, this is all personal preference. So uh, whether you like you know, a more snappy, faster recoil impulse or a nice, slow, soft push, uh, that's up to you. Select your ammo first, make sure it's accurate, and then optimize and tune from there. Okay, step two is change the locking piece. So this is probably the biggest effect that I've found on how the gun feels. So it's gonna come with an 80 locker. Uh, if you're getting great ejection and you feel like that load might be a bit more snappy with that 80 locker, go ahead and grab the 70. Most likely, I would guess that you guys are gonna be most happy with the 70 locker unless you're running factory NATO spec ammo. So that 70 locker covers the range of ammo that you're going to reload or competition loads, softer loaded ammo that you're going to buy for competition. Once you have the locking piece selected, the last thing I do to optimize the feel of the gun is to tune just the spring on the silent capture. And we've gone through how to change that, uh, but in general, you always want to make sure that your ejection is strong because if you have too much spring pressure and too much locking force, you're going to cause malfunctions. Okay, they're going to be stovepipes. What that's going to mean is the bolt isn't cycling all the way to get enough velocity with the ejector hitting the brass out of the ejection port, and the brass is going to stay in the action, which is really bad in this gun because we have the trunnion up here where it's really hard to dig it out. So if you get around trying to feed on top of a spent brass, you're going to have a bad time. Um, so don't go too close to the edge there. Make sure that you have strong ejection and then uh, tune from there. So. Going up in spring, I found it has a slower, softer push. Uh, it's a lot nicer, easier to manage. And going down in spring has a little bit of a faster, snappier push. Um, depending on what load you're running, you may find something that works great in the higher spring or lower spring rate. Don't copy other people. Experiment for yourself and figure out something that works for you. Now there's one more thing that you can do Say you found a load, uh, you know, maybe you're even running a really soft pressured load with 80% locker in there, um, but it's still a little snappy for you, but then going to the 70% locker, uh, maybe that's too much locking force and you're worried about getting stovepipes being right on the edge there. So there's one thing you can do here, which is add weight to the reciprocating mass, which is done by swapping one of these stainless steel weights for a tungsten weight. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how you do that. Again, we're gonna remove the weight carrier from the silent capture spring. Be careful because it's under spring tension. Now, once you have this off, you're gonna see the retainer spring uh, that's a little wraparound guy right in the back there. The best tool I've found to get this off, it can be a little tricky and finicky, but I like a very small flathead screwdriver and I try to dig it under the edge that's closest to the bottom and just lift the spring up. So the best thing I can say for this is, is use something with a fine point. If you're going to use a pocket knife to do this, be very careful you don't stab yourself. But getting your screwdriver under there and then just prying up and twisting at the same time usually will get it to lift over the edge like that. Now that's where you want it. Now I can use the screwdriver and just pull it off in a circular pattern until I get the whole spring out of that groove. And now the weights can slide off. So make sure you remember that there's an O-ring between the front and the first weight and then also an O-ring in between the two stainless weights here. So once I have that weight off, I can take this one out, swap it for a tungsten weight, which will add a little bit and then put that weight back on, put the O-ring back on and the bottom weight back on. Now to get this retainer clip on again, um, I usually don't need a tool for this part, but I'll take my fingernail and kind of separate one leg of that spring, get it in the groove first, and then just go around with my thumb in a circular pattern, putting pressure to slide that clip over the entire thing until it slots back into the groove just like that. And then again, go ahead, 
put the SCS back together, throw it in your gun, shoot some rounds, make sure you're doing a measurement drill in order to test if it really does feel better or if it's just your brain telling you that change is good. So that's my three-step process for tuning the JP5. Remember to experiment and find something that works for you, not copying what other people do. So once again, this has been Max Leo Grandis from Team JP Rifles. And go ahead and leave a comment in the description below if you guys would like to discuss what your favorite setup is for your JP5.